Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in Five Minutes. I am your ever loving host, Shorty, and this review is uh, of a comic book which has already uh, gone back to print. Um, Luke came out a couple of days ago, uh, totally sold out at a distributor level, and the second print is on the way for it. So, if you happen to be uh, some kind of comic book speculator or want to give it a try, and your comic book still happens to have a couple of copies just lying around, uh, then you should go and buy it. Uh, now, you're probably thinking, well, Shorty, since you've just told everyone to go and buy it, you must be really recommending this comic book. It must be brilliant. Well, here we hit the nub of the issue, because I quite like Colin Bunn. He's done some brilliant stuff. He's done my absolute favourite bit of American Gothic horror, Harrow County. Thoroughly worth your time. Which is a well, by the way, he's gone back to a couple of times, in fact. Most of the stuff he's done is basically ended up with me you know, waiting for that spark of genius again. Um, some stuff has been entertaining along the way. Um, his dark arc, a lot of stuff I love about it. Um, and other bits and pieces as well have come and gone. Uh, but he's done some Boo Studios. And one thing Boo Studios has been doing recently is basically launching great fantasy and horror series. Um, off the top of my head, something is killing the children. By Tinian, another writer who's just doing great stuff. So I thought, you know what? This could be the moment. And when I opened up, I was like, oh, yes, here we go. Because of this opening page. I like the way they play with colours. I like the, um, the fog-drenched mountains. I like the creepy people coming in from the woods, the town at the bottom, and the people looking up in fear. And you get this rather wonderful, gorgeous little picture there. That mountain in the background again, the slight like, glow off them because uh, they use like the neg white as a negative space as opposed to black. Um, you know, the detail on it is absolutely brilliant. The lush, almost hand drawn brush strokes look absolutely brilliant. A couple of pages later, it's just a regular comic book. Is it a bad looking comic book? No, no, it's actually very, very good looking. There are some rather wonderful moments, some great action sequences, some very cool character design, uh, and again, some really nice like set pieces. But that like swift change is kind of indicative of why I, I can't say I'm a huge fan of it because there's just a few too many kind of little issues with it throughout where it doesn't quite live up to what I want it to be. Now, yes, that's on me. Uh, I've got an expectation of Colin Bunn, which is probably a little bit above and beyond. And when you open up and see those few amazing pages, it's kind of hard not to just be like, wow, this is going to be amazing. The little problems are always going to be there for me. Um, don't get me wrong, this could be something which, if you like this kind of thing, you're going to love it. Um, um, but it does have a lot of things I do like. Um, it doesn't spoon feed you the story, as an example. You have no idea what's going on in that uh, first few pages there. That is literally the start of the story. Um, and by the time you get to the end of it, you still don't know entirely who those people are or what allows them to do what they do, or even like a motivation for it. Um, you get drip fed a little bit of information about who these people might be now, uh, what their motivations could potentially be and where that could lead. Um, you get some um, quite thin character development, though, on somebody who I have the feeling might actually be uh, a main character. You get a sense that she is basically out seeking revenge because those people at the beginning did something to her town and a bunch of people she like died. But nothing really else uh, for a first issue. Um, and yes, sometimes the first issue can get bogged down with setting up the story a little bit too much instead of actually telling the story. Uh, but in this situation, I do feel like it's slightly like just going hell bent for leather. It's it's trying to set stuff up. So by the end of uh, episode one, episode, issue one, you've got a sense of what's going to be taking place. And you can jump into issue two and go from there. Sums up quite nicely by the last couple of pages. And I, this is no real spoiler on this one. Um but again, it's another example that this art style can work quite nicely. Um, in fact, it shows far more characterization for the people in it than the first uh, uh, time they appeared. Um, it gives a sense of like, the way they're standing, the clothes they're wearing, their facial expressions. It drops more into the world like that. But it's still a little bit disappointing because it is a little bit more standardized a comic book fair. Um, which, again, if there's what you want, brilliant, go for it. But... On the run up to that, and I said earlier, there's like an excellent action sequence, and there really is, but there's also just a little moment which bugs me. Um, I don't know, it's, it's ultraviolet and everything, uh, somebody with a handgun, a revolver, in fact, and then a disappearing head. Now, yes, handguns can be exceptionally dangerous, um, and they can do a huge amount of damage, but it's usually going to be the exit wound that does that much damage, not the entrance wound, and if it's going to do that much damage, uh, firing it, what looks to be one-handed on the floor without properly uh, bracing yourself, is 
I know, I know. People are now thinking, well, shorty, this is just a comic book. Um, we're allowed to have it. And yes, I do get it. We also have like magic people with power, magic eyes and stuff going on. But occasionally there's just bits of real world stuff. Uh, and that's not the only one. There's a couple of the bits as well where it just kind of pulls me slightly out of the story. Um, add to that the fact that I spent most of it wishing it was something that it wasn't means it's just not for me. I, I have to stress though, it doesn't mean it's bad. Cullen Bunn is a great writer, and he's got some great little characterization pieces done in here. He's really, really good at like just um, setting up some great dialogue trees um, between characters. With so dialogue trees is a gaming term, uh, dialogue conversations between characters. But as I've said before, it just it didn't it didn't do what I wanted it to. I think on this situation, um, as much as you should buy it. It's going to go up in price, hopefully. Uh, if you actually want to buy it for it being a good comic book, um, I would actually recommend having a look at it yourself because I think my reasons for not liking it are not a criticism on its quality or the standard of artwork or anything like that. I think it just didn't deliver what I wanted it to, um, which admittedly, it's not a great way to review something, but it is what it is. Uh, I'll be back later on because I've got an extra one to do today. I'm going to do the Conjuring comic book. Uh, let's see if that actually um, grabs my attention. Uh, until then, everyone, stay safe. Bye now.